1946. The war was well and truly over, so you might expect the human race could go back to enjoying life, having a moment's peace, not having to worry about enemies attacking from the air at any given moment. Ah, not so fast! Here comes a murderous bird god called Quetzalcoatl, who has spent 300 years protecting some Aztec gold, who is now very pissed off due to imprisonment and having its feathers quite literally ruffled. Tough break, humanity. Maybe next year. I will begin today by describing the plot. Don't worry, this won't take long. A mad doctor has managed to capture an ancient bird god. He taunts and teases the beast by stealing one of its feathers. Quetzalcoatl's bird god parents never taught it to share, so it really gets triggered. The doctor helpfully lets the audience know that old Quetzi will kill to get the feather back, so he begins sneakily handing off the feather to his rivals and unleashes the winged beast upon them in a glorious display of cutting edge special effects and terror. No, Ray Harryhausen, this is not. With the flying serpent, we are back to fulfilling that campy horror itch. This film is as corny as a corn on a cob corn holding a corn dog in Cornwall. The star actor here is George Zuko, who reportedly never turned down a role. Having watched The Flying Serpent? Yeah, I can believe that. But I'm not here to be a player hater, far from it. The Flying Serpent gave me a fair deal of admittedly unintentional entertainment. I am a sucker for Aztec treasure. I am a fool for ancient bird gods. You better believe this plot tickles my campy fancy. The real star is, of course, the flying serpent itself. What a charming mother squawker it is. I love it. The way it gently flaps its wings. The way it takes off like a Looney Tunes cartoon. The way it takes its feather home, reminding me of a cute mama cat taking its kitten for a walk. The fact that the bird ends up killing everyone on the same small patch of road. Maybe it's just me, but it amuses me to no end. Every now and then, the non-bird scenes bring their own unintentional humour. The doctor nonchalantly drops the feather on the floor of his enemy's apartment and leaves. The enemy finds the feather and remarks to the lady just how insanely rare this particular feather is, how there are only three of its kind known to mankind, which are all showcased in museums and whatnot. It takes about five minutes of breathless, uninterrupted, clunky dialogue, and the scene is about to end before one of them finally wonders how the bloody fuck it got there in the first place. But I've got to go to Azteca to talk to Superintendent Hastings. He has brought me unusual feathers before, and it's just possible he may have left this for me while I was out. Perhaps he did. The Flying Serpent is often cited as a direct ripoff of the 1940 film The Devil Bat, in which Bela Lugosi's mad doctor uses a mutated bat to target and murder his rivals. The writer of The Flying Serpent decided to not help his case by just leaving in constant references to vampires, vampirism, and blood draining in his bird god script. In a sane world, we should mark the film down a few notches for this, but really, it makes me enjoy it all the more. God bless you, you lazy bastards. Anyway, on a more serious note away from all the goofy charm, The Flying Serpent's violent arrival in the late 40s can be seen as a sign of things to come. The following decade would take a greater liking to tales of large monsters and reptilian-style beasts. Those 1950s films usually had an underlying societal subtext to drive the fear, whether it was the atom bomb, or communism, and so on. The Flying Serpent raises a stern middle feather to that notion. <laughs> <laughs> 